Hi, my name is Maria Ev. I'm the Education Director at the C.R. Smith Museum, and I have the privilege and opportunity to work on some really impactful, meaningful, and often life-changing programs. And today we're going to be talking about one of those programs. With me is TechOps Engineer Koran Washington. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I couldn't think of a better person to have uh, this conversation with, actually, because mm-hmm. you've been involved with the aviation career pathways almost since the very beginning. And for those who might not know, the Aviation Career Pathways is essentially a collaboration between the museum, American Airlines, and Dallas ISD, where we target um, students from underserved communities, so Title I schools mostly, Mm -hmm. and we expose them for future careers that might be life-changing for them. Right. Um, And so it's a very hands-on, multi-year approach. We will see these students over the course of several years. Um, And we will have different interactions with them. They will come to the museum. We go into the classrooms to participate in activities like Aviation Career Day, for instance. And we're really connecting them with airline professionals that might have a a similar story to theirs. So it's really exciting work. Amazing. Tell me, Koran, why did you decide to be part of this program? That's a great question. So I decided to be a part of this program because growing up, I didn't have anyone that was involved in STEM or engineering or aviation um, career paths. And so when it came time for me to choose what I was going to do with my life and what career I was going to choose, um, I just Google searched highest paying majors with just an undergrad degree. And so that's what led me to mechanical engineering. That was the first thing that came so up. So it was money motivated. <laughs> it was definitely money motivated. And the thought process behind it was, if I don't like it, at least I'll make good money. Right. But I ended up falling in love with it and really wanted to share that passion with others. And the main thing I wanted to do was to change that narrative for kids coming after me, for the younger generation, so that their career wasn't just chosen just on the whim of a Google search and that they see representation in that career when they do it. Right. And that's a great point. Modeling is really important. If you never see people who look like you who work in that field, you're probably less likely to follow that kind of a career, right? Exactly. So tell me a little bit about the hands-on approach, right? Because this is a big part of this program. Yeah. When you go to the classroom or they come, for instance, for Aviation Career Day, Mm -hmm. what are some of the hands-on things that you do with them that might help build their confidence that they can be successful in that career? Well, so what we do is the first thing is we want to make sure that they're having an actual engagement and showing what we do as engineers. And instead of telling them, we build activities that they're actually going to be doing stuff that we do. Oh, I so, love that. So like the O-Wing glider experiment, um, they have to write their own work instructions and then pass that to others and also follow instructions so that they know how to give clear and concise directions to others. And so this is the the main thing. It's just not showing them what we do, right. but telling them or showing them and guiding them as they do it. So, And I heard that there's like a second part to this, right, where um, you take them kind of through a real life scenario. Yes, we do. So in that experiment, once they make it through their first obstacle course, when they have their aircraft, we then damage it. Right. And so <laughs> it's horrible. It, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet <laughs> for sure. After we damage it, they're there in charge of creating the sh- instructions to repair it. So we're there to guide them, to show them maybe add a doubler here or just go ahead and overhaul the whole aircraft if it's just completely destroyed you know so but also giving them the terminology to properly communicate what needs to be fixed and that's the big thing when it comes to learning about engineering and stem is just to kind of know about what exactly the dialogue is outstanding i love that they can actually try their hands at it because that's how they're going to build that confidence that they would be successful in that kind of a role Mm -hmm. um so what are you what are are some of the recommendations you would make to somebody who might have an interest in becoming a mentor or a volunteer like you are? Wow, great question. So what I would recommend is first, as an engineer, you don't have to know everything when it comes to being a technical person. You know, I don't, we don't need you to know how to program in every language. One thing is just to have a passion for helping people explore and learn more in the classroom. So that's the first thing. And also the second thing is to be vulnerable and be Mm. willing to share your story. That's a great point. That is a great point. The thing about that is it really opens up the door to connect with the students, not only just the students, but teachers and everyone else Mm -hmm. involved in the programs as well. Because now you're really starting to show how this has affected you 
and how this can really change your life, how this has changed your life and how it can change others as well. And so you never know who is in that room that can hear your story and feel connected with you, right? And can then learn something and continue to grow and excel from there. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that's something that we see in the survey responses from the the students because we we kind of want to know what the impact of this program is. So we mm-hmm. make sure that we collect data before and after the program and see if we're actually moving the needle. And some people tell me, you know, teens are intimidating. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to be oh, in front of yeah. a classroom yeah. full of teenagers. Uh, but even though they don't necessarily show their appreciation mm-hmm. right there on the spot, we see it in the surveys. Like they will say, thank you for coming to my classroom. For the first time in a long time, I felt like somebody cared about me. They handed me their business card told me, look, I'm going to help you through this process. So all of this is extremely meaningful. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. And even in those classrooms, when you talk to some of the students, they're a little too cool. They may not, (laughs) they may be ice cold, but in those surveys, you get to see that this information was actually received and that it made a difference. Absolutely. And what we hear a lot too is, you know, when they, when we ask them what career they are thinking of pursuing prior to the program, we hear a lot of I want to be a YouTube star or I want to be an Uber driver. This is what they know. This is what they're exposed to. But then there's nothing wrong with these careers. But we want to broaden their horizon. So when they come out of this program and we ask the same question, then we hear, you know, I still want to be a YouTube star. um, But if that doesn't work out, I'll consider being an engineer. So this is really exciting that they are um, thinking further than what they had kind of on their mind at first. Amazing. So if you're interested in uh, helping out with this program and being a volunteer and sharing your passion for what you do, you can contact us at education at crsmithmuseum.org. <laughs> <laughs>